All right, guys, welcome back to the show. For those of you who don't know, I'm Paul, the owner of Mr. Post Frame, and we've been getting a lot of questions about how uh, we set up our in-floor heat manifold and pressurize it for the concrete pour. So I'm just gonna give an overview of this house and garage here. We have it all prepared um, for in-floor heat, the concrete, um, but if you can see, we have all of our PEX tubing ran at one foot on center throughout here in 300 foot loops. And you see how it's nice and straight. Um, this will allow for nice, even heat. Um, so you can see we have um, fiberglass rebar laid over the top. But it all, all of these loops run back to where our utility room is gonna be, which is this location here. So depending on where this is located, if it's on an inside wall, you kind of have to figure out how to support it. We use one inch electrical conduits to run our tubing up through to protect it when the concrete gets poured. Um, and then that board will come off once the concrete's poured and we'll be good to go. So this is a two zone system. So this over here is the house, that over there is the garage. So at this point, we need to hook all of these up here together so that we can pressurize it. So I'll show you what I have here. Basically, I just have a bunch of T's that are crimped together to make up this uh, manifold. The end one is a 90, because that'll be the first one. And then the end here has a T, which will go to where I pressurize it. So that's the first thing you have. I always reuse this, and then I just cut the crimps off of this um, and, and reuse this top part. We have half inch crimp rings, our crimper, I have a PEX cutter, and then this is my pressure uh, gauge that I made. It's just got a slip fitting on one end, a T with a pressure gauge, a ball valve so I can uh, close the system so it'll hold pressure without the air compressor being on it, and then an air, uh, air hose hookup. So that's uh, the simple device that I made that I reuse all the time. And I put this on there so I can just slip it on and off real easy. So now we're gonna go through the process of hooking this all up. So what I'll do is I'll cut these all off even and they'll all get crimped onto here, which we're gonna do right now. Get me out to there. All right, guys, I put this longer loop on so that I can run this to the outside of the building. That way um, I can monitor it and not be in the concrete guy's way. So we'll just fasten this all, kind of tape that up. I'll get this fastened out here and then we'll get the air compressor and put some air on this and see how we did. So we got this ball valve on here so that way we can turn on and off the air to the system. So we'll go ahead and start pressurizing it. Might take a while because the air compressor is not caught up, but. Starting to rise. Run 
run it up to 50. And then we'll just leave it like that and see what happens over the next couple hours. As cold as it is, we're probably gonna lose, we might lose a couple PSI, um, but we'll see what it does.
All right, guys, so I'll show you um, kind of how the concrete uh, works over here along our grade board and around columns. Get this question a lot. So here's a polystyrene that goes down two feet, and then there's polystyrene that butts into this, that comes underneath. There's where our plastic was. We always bring it up, staple it up here, and then we cut it off afterwards. And so um, we'll put our interior girts on that will run from this column over to there, and then the spray foam will get sprayed in here, attached to this, come back and fill all this. Um, so you get a thermal break all the way up, and then behind, the columns will get filled with spray foam. And then we bring, so our plastic um, is, goes around this post here. Concrete gets posts around this. Um, there's some guys that don't do this. They like to have this column all the way up. Um, but if you do that, you can't get insulation around here because your footing, your pier footing is higher. So I choose to keep my pier footing down and then pour the concrete around here. And this also locks this bracket and these columns in. So if you look at that, there's concrete from this side of the column all the way over to that one. And that locks the bottom of this bracket in place. Um, I like it, um, works out well. If you don't, no big deal, you can do it differently. You can see, nice and clean. Um, if you really think about it, there's only probably about three inches max here of concrete from the edge of the post to here, but it does fill all that in and I like that. This right here, there's a drain in the floor, it's sloped, that's for a custom shower. Um, this one will actually get um, a rubber membrane, then another mud pan poured in here, or placed in here, and then the tile will go over that. We got a drain that's sloped here for the utility room. And then here are all of our PEX lines. There's the one inch electric conduits that we use. This board here will get removed. This board will get removed. That's just to hold it in place while the concrete's getting poured. This is that box I made. Um, so all of this will get uh, taken off and just slide it right up over um, the tubes. We just do that to protect everything down in here while the concrete's um, getting poured and construction is happening. Um, definitely want to protect the tubes. These are all the water lines for the house that run underneath and pop up in different spots. So we'll have a water manifold right here. Um, I put all of these stakes on the inside so I'll be able to get all of those out. Those are those details. You can see how the finished PVC is. This is a toilet um, drain, so that'll get cut off flush with the floor. And then this is a vent. Um, so I'll just extend up the wall. And I think that's about it. You can see where our water lines pop up in that PVC pipe that I use. Um, that way, these are never in contact with the concrete anywhere. Um, we'll fill all this with spray foam, um, can spray foam, just to protect those, make sure nothing gets down in there. And there are no joints in that PEX tubing underneath the floor. Alright guys, that's going to be a wrap. Don't forget, we have a Patreon group where we cover different self-building topics. You get to ask, ask me questions. We do a live once a month. You get to be a part of a community of other self-builders. Um, it's a really great uh, thing to be a part of. Also, we do design. Um, so if you're looking to design your own post frame home or building, you can reach out to us, design Mr. Post Frame. But as always, we appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you on the next video.